Alrighty, so we are officially live and I'm so excited because in our second edition for this year, um, we get to talk to, that is the National Theatre of Namibia and uh, that is the Public Relations Officer uh, Desiree Menta. Um, please do remember when we're live, you can of course ask questions, you can also share your views and perhaps anything that is burning on your heart. I think uh, for the past two years we've noticed that the National Theatre has shut their doors for physical performances and they've really rooted it to an online platform where they get to just really embark on projects that is online and making sure that we get to ignite all that fuel of the artist way and of course artistic um, discipline. So uh, let's get to find out from Desiree Matias, uh, not Desiree Matias, but rather Desiree Mentor, uh, you know, just in terms of what the National Theatre has planned for this year. I'm excited about that. So please uh, do drop a question, anything that you perhaps have, you know, burning heart on. I know I've gotten a lot of inboxes of people asking me, how do I get to stage my production at the National Theatre? So please make sure that you get to ask the right questions right about now. So let me just quickly see uh, whether we can get a hold of um, Desiree from the National Theatre of Namibia. So please, I'm, I always get so nervous. Um, please do feel free to ask questions. Uh, this is a platform that we've created for all creators. Thank you so much to Gurli Yadama, who's also tuned in. I see Mr. James Itana as well as Patrick. Uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in, Cassidy, as well. Uh, get to share some love. You know, please do make sure that you ask the relevant questions um, and make sure that, you know, this is the National Theatre of Namibia, I think one of the biggest, um, where they just really get to share their view um, in terms of what they're doing in terms of art for our country and especially the performing arts. Yeah, if you want to stage a production at the National Theatre as well, um, let me just see. I'm trying to get a hold of Desiree. Desiree! I am here. I can see you. How are you? Oh, I can see you. I wasn't so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am good. It's been amazing. It's a wonderful day. Yeah. How are you? How's I'm it well, day? thank you. It's just hot. So I had to powder my face before going live. <laughs> you know? Well, look at me sitting all the time shining. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as an actor, I've, I've realized you must always carry your, your, your powder um, wherever you go. So uh, th that is one of the things that I, that I carry. That's a, it's a must for me, um, especially when you go live and, you know, do um, on-camera work. I love your background. You should have shared this a long time ago. Oh, the background, it's a little bored. I am at home. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's Sunday. We don't go yeah. to the office. Um, so I have this board at home that everyone that usually pops this year is more than welcome to use. They write, and it's been amazing. People write amazing things. I think I still have one of the quotes that says, if you don't like something, it's just right there on top. Yeah. What uh, does it if say? You don't like something, change. It says, if you don't like something, change it and if you can't change it change the way you think about it so oh wow people oh, wow. yes um, I, I, so I, like I leave how... some of them yeah i think i'm gonna somewhat jump in on that quote because i think ultimately <laughs> uh that quote is gonna set the tone for our for our live session because um you know you're the public relations officer of the national theater of namibia and i must say the impeccable work that you've done so far, uh, especially during the pandemic as well, speaks for itself. And many times we, we you know, we question, hey, but, you know, um, why is it that the National Theatre's doors aren't open? But obviously we've changed the way in which we do things. That's what this pandemic has has required of all of us as creatives and moreover, uh, you know, a platform like the National Theatre. So Desiree, just tell us a little bit about the current you know, mission, the vision of the National Theatre, where does the National Theatre foresee itself in the next five to 10 years? I mean, I will, I will probably start off by saying the theatre has been in existence in Namibia for a while now. Mm. Um, it had also changed pace over a period of time. I remember in the 60s, around the 1960s, used to be called just the Arts Theatre. Yeah. It has then since evolved to be called the Ventuk Theatre. And of course, um, roundabout, I think it was in 1970, that um, it was then 
renamed the Venduk Theatre, and then as we know it now as the National Theatre of Namibia, which was uh, then named in 1989. So as a national theatre, which is generally in, uh, uh, which is mandated to then just make sure that we develop uh, that we develop the performing arts industry. I mean, I will now connect to support it like as in the creative industry. Um, yeah. I think the NTN had done an immeasurable job and it's still doing uh, doing so. Of course, the theater had changed faces, mm -hmm. um, leaderships and everything over a period of time. But one thing had could remain that it is very evident that theater and performing arts in Namibia has grown. Like yeah. people can actually be part. And it also had become... Uh, a lot more inclusive over the over the last thirty years, yeah. uh, where people had then an opportunity, especially black people before didn't necessarily it used to be an exclusive, a very exclusive space. And I yeah. think that had changed over so many over such a period of time that everybody as well come to the theatre and it isn't just uh, looked at as an elitist sort of thing because yeah. it is inherently us. Theatre is us. It is something that we've done as kids, a storytelling, you do mimic your uncle, there's always a comedian in the family, there's always a performer in the family, so um, I think the theatre had done an amazing job as the National Theatre over the past 30 years to do that yeah. and create opportunities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and just saying, you know, everyone is a performer, I think that in itself as a tagline is so inclusive of, uh, you know, every discipline. Um, every discipline from music, because I, I know now that your your biggest focus currently now is the business of music. And what a role music plays within the theatrical space, within the artistic space. Tell us a little bit about that project. Um, well, actually, I'm, I'm thinking that you're referring to our publication. That's correct. And... Um, oh, I'm very happy that you have to, taken the chance to read through that. So for <clears> everyone that is in now have launched a publication, actually two publications last year. Yeah. It was the um, music business in Namibia, um, which was the, our letter launch to the theater business in Namibia. Mm. So here, uh, you know, because like lockdown, you couldn't have a lot of people at the theater. So we yeah. got to do what we got to do. So if we can't <laughs> perform, let's see how we can how we can share tools and all kinds of things with you. Um, let us see how the creative in essence making the business out of the um, out of uh, out of their art. So such yeah. is that these two publications with the book, they mm. are available. They'll be available twenty four sites, so you can download them for free. It's it's quite a, a it's quite a comprehensive type of book. I mean, and it gives accounts of people within this industry, which is now both music as well as theater. So yeah. you will have a real life account of musician sharing how, for instance, they uh, they have been. How the how they have been operating throughout the time. Yeah, you'll have some people telling you about marketing your your music business. Um, we have a few uh, DJs, so it's a lot of different yeah. people in the music industry that are giving insights. Of now, these are living examples of people, and that you can learn. We have quite handy tools like how do you budget for mm. a show? How do you price yourself as wow. an artist uh, if you are? up and coming, mm. when are you a beaten artist, when are you, so it really gives guidelines to a real accounts of number mm. of people in the Namibian music and theatre business. Yeah. Quite, I think it's amazing. So if you do get the time, glance through it, go to our website, www.atn.org.na, and I just, you can read one chapter a day. <laughs> <laughs> but please do, I would encourage, please, please, please do. So yeah. uh, that that has been an amazing project, and of course, one of the many projects that we did into capacitating people because of that theater. Yeah, no, no, I just need to snap, uh, you know, for the National Theater and just the work that you've been doing because I do know one of the one of the DJs that you just mentioned now is DJ Castro, who's also on there. And you know, when you talk about inclusivity, you're really talking about how am I including someone from. Uh, you know, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and he's from Ochivarongo, and he gets to be featured on this platform. Uh, the likes of Lisa Ellis is on this. So just well done, I think, to the National Theatre for embarking on such a project that I think is necessary, especially when you need to talk about budget and the business yes. of music, you know? 
So well, well, well done. I I I thank you so much, Adriano. I think like uh, um um I think one of the most important things that artists maybe sometimes might have challenges with is the issue on intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Who are owning it? Where do I own it? So there are some chapters on that too. Yeah. I just thought I'd highlight that as well. So that wow. people care. I can contact. I can contact uh, this type of organization so I can speak to all of these people to in order for me mm. to just be better. So we really just want to help. And I'm hoping that all creative in, institutions or creatives can reach out and we can see how we hold hands. Because COVID definitely taught us yeah. how to hold hands together. We were not going to get through this by ourselves. Absolutely. And um, yeah, and the MTN, of course, making sure that there is always opportunities provided. Yeah. Another project that stood out for me, and sorry that I'm jumping the gun here, was the Olaf, because you're talking about collaboration here. And Olaf, for me, just stood out so beautifully. You know, the fact that uh, the National Theatre with their partners encapsulated different uh, parks all all across Vintuk and uh, different spaces. And having been part of one of the beneficiaries from that, it was such a weird but also uh, a necessary space that uh, allowed artists to just embark on in terms of performance uh, you know that comfortability of not necessarily being at the national theater but now out in public and really taking theater to the people tell us a little bit about Olaf and whether one would have one in 2022 as well we would really love to to make all of like the biggest festival so that Bindu becomes all of the anonymous to Bindu. Yeah. So what happened was um the, for the very first time, and it's the first of its kind of festival, I think. So Ola is uh, an acronym for the Archim We Say Life Arts Festival, um, which of course Archim We Say referring to the city of Bindu. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it is our hope and dream that Ola becomes the, the, the space where people flock from different countries because they want to experience the festival. Yeah. So what this festival does is obviously it is not limited to performing arts, mm. but the nice thing is that it provides opportunity for visual artists, for the, um, ah, English. <laughs> for Say in Afrikaans. <laughs> Crane, no need the English. Yeah. Um, Oh, uh, we only speak English, my so we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Ola provides um, opportunity, obviously, for and for new kinds of theatre. You know, contemporary theatre is. We took um, perform a creative arts into the most remote spaces that you might not otherwise find. That for one. And gave us a chance to actually experience the city because like, you visited places you haven't known. Exactly. I, I didn't know. So uh, what was nice about it, it was the hunting of the of the of the spaces where we can have this public art. We had mur- mm. murals. Uh, we have launched a few murals. I think that when you pass by the ISD and come school, you'll find one there. There's yeah. one in Havana. There's one in uh, by. A comment that the Ala Duplicy Eldorado, Eldorado so behind Augustinium uh, next to the Ministry of Labor, yeah, no, no, next to the Ministry of Labor, Eldorado, yeah, Eldorado, yeah, yes, there's also one there, which is also one of the schools that we had incorporated into taking part. Of course, the ICM come kids, um, joining in on you know, painting the murals and stuff. Wow, um, it was just. It was an amazing experience, obviously, to have to work with public in mm-hmm. all of the different spaces of Bindu. Uh, we've had performances just basically all around. So it was just a bomb up of bringing life to the city. It is an amazing project and yeah. it lasts for about a week. And we definitely want uh, people to uh, people to partake in that. You mm-hmm. can, there were some performances. Yourself have performed in the park with Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Performing for the people in a space yeah. that, that, that is otherwise not deemed as a traditional performance space. But um, back again, maybe the Puma, which is 
generally think the world is but a stage. Mm. So everywhere can be a stage. So you can maybe share on how that experience. So I'm I'm going to be honest. You know, um, I I said this um during the performance that it was quite vulnerable for us because we're so used to uh, theatre being on stage. And you know, just like uh, Shakespeare would say, all the world's a stage, and that means we can create a stage anywhere we go. What was what was the beauty of the Ola for me was having taken theatre to people and to the youngsters that we could ignite. Because during our performance in Komasdal, we had boys playing football as per usual in the park, and they decided, you know what, we're going to skip our football for half an hour and really just come watch this theatre space or this theatre piece that's being performed and that for me allowed me to also just empower the next generation because so many times the youth are not exposed to a national theatre or to a theatrical space they see this on tv or they see uh, you know what inspires them from international perspective but there's not local inspiration to tell them but you know what it's possible for you to also be an actor or an actress and this is the guideline so uh, the partnership of Olaf with the Guta Institute um uh, and all the members that were involved i think it's a it's an amazing project so continue doing it yeah yes definitely also please keep a look out we uh, Olaf does have a social media pages so um, you can uh, have a peep through on uh, the amazing ta- pictures and then you'll have an idea of what had happened throughout. So we're hoping to have Olaf back again this year. So yeah. please keep a look out social media pages for Olaf and see um, how we then involve uh, creatives is that we do a public call out. Yeah. And then of course, so you can look forward to later after like to perform, like to showcase some of the things. Um, I think what was also amazing was that it wasn't just performances. I think there was like a poster, a poster exhibition on GBD. We had a yeah. graphic designer doing that. So there's innovative ways of how you can do the Olaf. It is was not yeah. limited, so you can be as creative as possible. So uh, follow the the, uh, the Olaf, Olaf page uh, social well. media page. Yeah. Yes, so uh, that when there is a fallout for artists again, that you just keep up to date on that. So, yeah. Lovely, lovely project. Yeah. Desiree, let's dive into, uh, you know, spaces, because I do know that the National Theatre is such a mess of space. And uh, during the past two years, you know, not a lot of productions has been going on, but the space has also now been open because I, I think COVID have some have sort of subsided in one way or the other. Uh, let's talk about the, the spaces that you offer and whether it's for rental, for corporates, uh, you know, for theater, uh, for projects, for festivals. Uh, let's talk about some of the spaces that one could rent because I know, uh, you know, you've housed ballets, uh, shows, Last Band Standing, uh, all these amazing projects that the National Theater has, has housed. So let's talk about, you know, what are some of the projects and spaces that you offer? And, you know, what is it that the National Theatre says, you know what, we are here, should you need a venue, we can offer either the green room, uh, the ballet room upstairs, backstage, uh, the entire theatre, or just the foyer, for example? I mean, endless what you mm. can do in the, in the theatre. Um, but we, of course, have a number of venues within the theater a lot of the times people are, are only aware of the auditorium perhaps like you come in and you sit but that space can transform itself into magical things i mean i for one had once seen a production that had motorbikes yeah. because we have this amazing uh we have the amazing stage that you can lower and come up and it was so i think it was like years ago maybe a page of radio energy so yeah. Um, yeah. So they have bikers coming up. So it look as if they come from underground. And wow. Amazing, amazing. So we have we have that of course. Um, the stage, the uh, the auditorium space can be uh, the auditorium stage. The stage is then used on the auditorium side. Yeah. Or of course you can use it backstage. More for what you have mentioned, live music performances and so we've had hosted dinners at, at there. There's been conferences at the back. It's really just such a black box that you can 
create whatever you like. Of course, uh, there might be some limitations in terms of the number of people gathering yeah. because the auditorium is uh, contemplating about 470 people yeah. and your event at back is 4,250 people. So if you write within those numbers, Mm. Um, then uh, this would be the most ideal spaces to use. We've had corporates coming through. We've had birthday parties. We've, yeah. we've had the after parties. We hit and go no more, like all the time. And I think we do so much on that space. Yeah. Um, of course, we also have our smaller venues. Um, mm. If you are interested to have, like, I know sometimes for people want to have colloquiums, like if you're an academic, you just think like you can. Um, you really want to maybe have a few people over and then read the pieces or whatever. Like, or you have a book launch. I know poets use really nice intimate spaces yeah. um, and stuff like that. So that, if you have a presentation that you need to do, mm. we do have alternative venues, which uh, we then use. The, the, we have our foyer area. Yeah. If you've been to the theater, it's basically the reception area. Yeah. And that's we've had uh, a book launches there. We've had media uh, like a media launches. Um, we've had like lectures and stuff like that. That's the type of event that you can yeah. have in there. It takes about um, say fifty people. Yeah. And we have our really you just said the green room, uh, which is a music rehearsal. So it's for bands. It's like if you like to sing. Yeah. Anything. So, anything. so hold up. So, um, so the green room. Too. If if I'm a band and we know we've got a performance coming up, we can then rent the, the, the green room for our rehearsal space and then come through. Because what I do know is that there's a piano, there's the drums, there's the guitar, the mic stands, uh, quite a few uh, instruments as well as... Yeah. It comes with, I think, like the basic, basic instruments that you need and you just probably need to bring your guitar and so forth. But there are microphones. So basically... The advantage of renting the theater is that once you do, you get the theater with all of its equipment. Yeah. Um, so whatever we have, you are then able to you are then able to use, and it is probably just going to be an additional cost. Should we not have the equipment, but for the most part, we do. Yeah. We do have uh, uh, we have equipment that you can use. Yeah. Um, so it is it is nice in in. In that sense, and of course, like the a green room, and so you booked it in six for like three hours a day, or you could do six hours. It really just depends on how long you'd like to be in there. Yeah. Um, we have our dance rehearsal room, which is very, very effective for dance production. Yeah. So if you are rehearsing dancer, you just need a space. I just need to get together. I know also there's a lot of beauty pageants out there, so this is also like an amazing space to just. Miss Namibia, wink, wink. <laughs> yes, because, yeah, because it has like this huge mirror uh, for, it's it's an amazing venue for all of the rehearsals and then just getting together because mm. the processing is also what makes that beautiful. And it has this amazing mirror. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So <laughs> um, yeah, and <laughs> uh, our venues are also air conditioned, so they're quite, it's, I think they're quite nice spaces to yeah. rehearse, and we hosted quite a number of people. So if you come to the theater, you'd be in the same theater that Adriana was. Or yeah. um, we hosted presidents, first ladies, like mm. come to us. Yeah, you know why? Why I'm laughing so, because of um, the mirrors is because every time we rehearse, there's a constant uh, reminder that as an actor, don't look in the mirror, and that's why I'm laughing and. So subconsciously, when we enter into different spaces at the theater, we always go to the mirror and just, I don't know, it's either take a selfie or just do something crazy. So if, if those mirrors had cameras, you would probably see an entire production. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a large one. Exactly. Also do, uh, as, as, a, like, as, as someone working at the theater, but it's also sometimes nice to me just into rehearsals with People are randomly busy. Yeah. Uh, and I remember this one time, I think for when for good and sis. Yeah. That I had to read your lines because you was <laughs> you, you, you like I I don't know where you were, but it was like five minutes and I was all up in that role. I was like, yes, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> of course I could never act. Yeah. So I had a ball of a time to read them. 
uh, into reading their lives. And I was so I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I think like maybe we were a bit earlier or they were earlier. So they yeah. were reading through the lives. So I had to read your lives. I was like, yes, teach me jobs. I'm taking it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, that, that is so nice. You know, the, um, the opportunities that you get to have yeah. to mingle with, with, with people and then mm. talk. I mean, it's, it's, Generally, the, I love the spirit of yeah. the artists and actors coming. It's just like a creative space and seeing the works um, yeah. uh, until then. When you see that, I th- I always think I'm very fortunate enough to see the process and not just the end product. Exactly. Um. So those are some of the opportunities that you also at the theater that you bump into another creative and people mm. get into deep conversations when they do. Yeah. Um. And collaborate and all of those things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just just visit us. In fact, we do theater tours. So even if you're not booking the theater, mm-hmm. I mean, you can make an appointment with us and yeah. uh, through the venues, you know, mm-hmm. so that you can physically see like whatever that is like just to experience a walk through the theater. We also do that. So and that's and that's for free. To come and perform. Yeah, that's absolutely for free. Yeah. So I, I think they should... And you just need to come to school. Yeah, I think they should ultimately be sort of a call out to, to then different public schools to also just come visit the theatre, you know, just to come see. Uh, for me, it's always been a thing of let's pass on the baton so that we can ignite young actors and actresses to really say, you know what, this is the space I want to walk into. Let me go study uh, the performing arts um, and, and I know that the National Theatre does offer the walkthrough because that's how I was exposed to, to, to the National Theatre by first having a oh. tour and then we saw Uncle David uh, and Mornay and Stanley perform Master Harold and the Boys in 2009 and boom, that for me ignited, you know, wanting to be in theatre and three years later, I did my first musical which was Mamma Mia, uh, Mamma Mia and uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so I, I, I need to. I'm just laughing because I'm like, yo, I've been at those shows. I've been, whoa, I've been there a while. <laughs> <laughs> the boys, like it was yesterday. Amazing, amazing. And me, yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, we've had some really great productions. Absolutely. You know, talking about productions, you know, in the and, next. Um, in the, in the past five years, what are some of those productions that has really stood out for you or perhaps, you know, that has said, uh, you know, this is, these are productions that have placed the National Theatre on, on, on an international platform or just productions that stood out for you or for the National Theatre and productions where the National Theatre is really saying, you know what, we'd love to partner up with these people again. We'd like for these type of productions to come back again because I remember uh, the Cape Town um, dance ballet came to uh, you know do ballet for oh. almost a week or so and that for me was you know a production that was sold out before it even got to to Namibia or the Trevor Noah productions or um, you know productions such as Mary Poppins or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, you know th- those types of musicals that are constantly sold out and perhaps, you know, one look at such productions and say, those are productions we'd love to see run on a continuous basis because not only does it create revenue for the actors, but production-wise, it's, it's also uh, cost-efficient for, for the National Theatre. Uh, what are some of those productions that you'd love to see really come back and that has stood out? Um, personally, I think... Um, well, there's been many productions, many, mm. many productions. Um, personally, I think um, any production that is unapologetically telling a Namibian story, that of a Namibian yeah. story, really gets to me first. And I'll take an example of the story of Jackson Kayoa, for instance. Um, I thought that that, that that was an amazing, so that we create the habit that people are able to experience through Namibian mm. stories when they act the piece. So that was one. Yeah. Um, there was uh, there was the production Anima. It was a dance production which I thought would take Namibia up in arms and so I yeah. loved those ones specifically. And then 
course, the story of John Mafangeo that was also told in the theater. And uh, all of those stories uh, that can truly and unapologetically tell the story, because at first it is an opportunity for people to learn about the, our own stories. So mm -hmm. uh, those ones I would, typically, I would typically very highlight. But I would say the best production to have ever worked on. And to just see how amazing a production gets sold out by one tweet was, of course, Trevor Noah. Mm -hmm. It was a tweet. And the next minute, there are absolutely almost no tickets left to the productions. And he had to add on. So uh, I add on another production. And those ones are the ones you're like, yo, yo. I could not. And <laughs> a personal favorite of mine was also seeing for the first time Maasai dancers in the theater that was from Kenya. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh my goodness, I need to see more of this. So that was obviously some, some of my highlighted mm -hmm. performances in terms of just enjoying most of the time. We are working on the production. And yeah, yeah, but we're fortunate enough to also just like if we we're able to sit back and at least one full day. So exactly. So um, yeah, so that's, that's the nice thing. There's been amazing productions, and it's always a pleasure to see sold out mm. on the poster. Exactly. Then, you know, they had four, five hundred more people that are away of the theater, but the theater has to work. Absolutely. And that can change so because in that. Space, there's been so many the memories. Like, like people, <laughs> there's these that have, they, for the first time I'm seeing this space, for the first time I'm experiencing something. Gala has always been very big. Gala and was, uh, the orchestra performances, yeah. they, they are very, yeah, yeah they're very, very popular. But um, we, we, we're hoping now that we are able to get a lot more people to just get the people back. Yeah. To the theater. To the theater. So everyone, and I think this is the burning question that has been on everyone's mind. When is the National Theater opening? And is the National Theater opening for productions very soon? Uh, when can we submit scripts for short productions? Um, that has been the burning question in everyone's mind. You know, some of the questions that I did on the poll to say, uh, what are some of the questions you want to ask the National Theater? Jenny Kandenge asked, mm -hmm. Uh, Jason Cooper asked, when, does the, when is the National Theatre opening? So uh, maybe to you, Desiree, when is the theatre officially opening to say we are open for productions, we would love people to come back into the theatre, we're still abiding to pro uh, COVID protocol, ABCD. Uh, what is the current status quo? Well, actually, uh, amazing to announce, after the announcement um, by the President about two weeks ago, that the numbers of gatherings have been increased to 500. I think we did, I, I can't say that we've entirely closed because we did have small scale, uh, we did have small scale gatherings at the theater when we did workshops and all of those. Yeah. Uh, so so it, it, I can't particularly say that the theater has like, shut the doors down, mm. but when the opportunity arises for people to come out from the numbers of 50 to 100, we've always had small scale, um, small scale events, uh, yeah. whether it is a, a rental event or whether that is, which ours was more on capacity building, which is mostly the workshops that have been taking place where we could then do that. So the closing, not so entirely, yeah. but of course, as in like a big, a bigger opening in terms of are people supposed to come? Of course, and we had the, uh, we had an event on last week. Yeah. Um, so, which is the, with the, with the, with the, with the, that has seen a number of people. I think like that has been the most number of people at the theater since the lockdown. And it was an overwhelmingly amazing and has all creators back. So you could just see how hungry everybody is. <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh my goodness, thank you for people. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for people. We can people again. So quite excited that we can people. Yeah. Um, and now that the numbers are up, I think we kept the theater back on full capacity again. Uh, what we do want the public to do is, of course, uh, support. We've all seen how every creative has been affected by the lockdown. Yeah. So I would just like any support a creative, if you, if you can, buy a yeah. ticket. Buy a ticket for someone if you don't really like the thing or 
talk to the people and say, listen, mm -hmm. I would like to donate a, dollar, a ticket money or whatever, because yeah. we know what the struggles have been for creatives. Yeah. Lockdown. So, and as far as possible, my cry would just personally be for people to support one another. You're right. With that said, we have our first rental event back. Um, uh, Anshan Villa is coming back to the theater with the dance school. So, you can look forward to I mean, once again ballet, temporary dancing. So, Anshan Villa is a dance academy. Yeah. So, she has her annual production at the theater week. So, yeah. We're quite excited to have that. And it's as early as 3 March yeah. and it will be until the 12th of March. Okay. And, and tickets are still yeah, available. So keep a look. Tickets are, yeah, you can still get tickets. They are at our study at Wootons. Um, so you can buy, you can buy them there. But it's, of course, one of those productions where tickets get sold out so fast. Yeah. So I'd really hop on to get to our social media pages and then just get the number uh, for inquiries and you can just also inquire whether there are how many tickets are still left but yeah. I would definitely that you get that yeah. as soon as possible so with that it will also be our mostly like welcome back type of uh, type of event. production yeah and I love you you, you you had the question on that was a question on when the theater is open yeah it's, it is open mm. and you had a question on call outs yeah yes oh, i did okay. and call outs was, for, um, for scripts yeah. and uh because i know oh, what, oh, what yes. i know what was discontinued was is it the theater zone uh production that normally happened well no not really discontinued so a lot of mm. the mtn's uh projects that we have just revised our mm. our project on the course was a platform that gave opportunity to people that are not they might they may not be professional yet but then of mm. course they have already some background on the developmental a developmental uh, uh, project so yeah. it's, it's not that it died we just revised and renamed a lot of our a lot of our projects but of course they is still they still provide the same opportunity for people to do works and then to be mentored while they do that yeah um so we were actually going to start off in 2020 with our newly revised project yeah. and so we did have a call out before then but unfortunately we couldn't see it yet so yeah um i think um, soon enough we should uh now with the new year and so forth soon enough we should be able to see how we can proceed this because there's a lot of factors also to be considered in yeah. terms of um, which of these which of these productions would we be able to put on and which not, but that call out has already been done, yeah. um, and we will just continue with the submissions that will be made then. Okay. And you get what I'm saying? Because I get like a backlog type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but nonetheless, well, the theatre is also very much welcome for anybody that has works, and mm. I think I would like to. Uh, let me present this work to theater and say if it is something that they could collect on or mm -hmm. um, I mean like if you have the work we don't discourage everybody to just wait for a call out yeah but then contact us and then say listen I have this works do you think uh, we can do this together or I would like to do it mm -hmm. or you know just go out if you like okay I have I have a, a sponsors or whoever that is willing to are you able to come on board like just mm. just do not be discouraged wait for the call out in order for you to present your works to the ATM. yeah i think we're always a common in and as far we could also say okay maybe we can approach this all time or like this but just don't be discouraged wait for the call out contact us and then let us talk on, yeah. uh, on what we can and what we are unable to do yeah Yo, I, I, I feel so energized and, and fueled. Uh, and also just to everyone that's joining us on the live, if there's any question to the public relations officer, De Desiree Mentor, that you want to ask, all related to the National Theatre of Namibia, please do ask now. Uh, if you're creative, if you're someone that has always wanted to be at the National Theatre, please do ask all these relevant questions right now. And, you know, Desiree, you just spoke of, of something so important. And I think this entire conversation has really sur been surrounded by uh, the importance of collaboration. And for the past couple of years, I've seen 
that innate collaboration with the Guta Institute. Let's talk about, um, I can see someone walking past, but don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, the importance of key collaborations and how open the National Theatre is to saying, you know what, would love to partner up with the Guta Institute, love to partner up with the US Embassy or uh, with the French Embassy to really say, how are we disseminating theatre not just in Vintuk, but to the south, to the east, to the west, uh, to say that we're empowering someone at the coast or in Kietman's work, or we're saying, let's work on projects where we are able to collaborate as a national theater with either Joburg Theater to really just, you know, continue that spirit of uh, theater collaboration and just for good, uh, you know, exposure of, of creatives as well. Um, I think in terms of, let me just like in terms of um, collaboration, there are some partner institutes that the NTM has uh, has partnerships with, which in this case you will notice, yes, with the Gute, through their Gute stage. And that means it is a collaborative. Also, we collaborated with Gute on the Washington Life Arts Festival. Um, so uh, there is, there are institutes, obviously the National Theatre has very, um, a very good relations with and they also have a big interest just in the creative industry yeah. like the FNCC you know and the audios and so so much more so we have some uh, quite a number of good uh, of good good institutions that we collaborate with and always see to 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 uh, to see decentralization like you say obviously is a very important yeah. important part which is what the theater would do um, yeah, sometimes we are constrained by not having the the monetary, you know, you know, the money to our all out is for all we can do. But we try and reach that out in it as uh, uh, we try and do that through whether yeah. it is short term or long term collaborations with people. And with that said, I would also I'd, I'd like to encourage, like, if there are people in the towns that are outside, of this, a lot of the times people. People, uh, people don't want to think that, no, I only have this inventory. If you are creative and you are, um, and you are in a different city, um, or you have a small drama club, or even if there is a drama club at schools, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, we, have, we have ways where maybe we could collaborate with institutions or like the ministry, for instance, to just say, there is this person that is in a small town, they are doing this. And if possible, I'm pretty sure that the support is also going to come up. So yeah. um, I would really not want to discourage anyone because they are outside of Vinduk not to be able to bring, or not to be able to do something yeah. where you are. Yeah. A lot of the times that response Responsibility solely lies on institutions and great places yeah. that are mandated with that thing. But if you can do the little bit within your space, among your family, among your friends, at school, yeah. wherever, uh, please do that and see how you can talk to these organizations yeah. to also help to also help them because we could we could become so much greater if we had uh, so. Absolutely. I would really encourage that. And if you are outside of town and you are doing anything that, mm. that will spark the interest of the NTN, please do reach out to us and mm. let's just hear what you're doing. It's also sometimes just nice to say, hey, I'm Adriana, I am an actor and I have this a small drama club that I've started there. And it's like, oh, we work with another, as a medical we can ask him if he can support by providing you guys training. If yeah. You I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. You know, uh, there's, I, I need to say this. This live has just given me so much hope. And I believe when we save it as well, that it's going to give the directors and actors and creators and the public so much hope as well. Because for the longest time, yes, we thought, okay, cool. Maybe because of COVID that, you know, the, the national theater stores have been shut or like you said, there's just smaller productions or, uh, you know, smaller space in terms of gathering. But now that we know and we understand that the theatre is opening, understanding, obviously, it's all about the capacity as well. Uh, I, I need to say this. Thank you so much. 
And thank you to you know you and the team because it's it's such team effort because uh, I mean I'm talking about the arts director Nella and and Alma and you know just this full female force. I need to say it because it's it's run by these amazing females that have just taken up space at the National Theatre. And and you know personally when I walk into the National Theatre uh, and and even when I was there on Thursday, it was so good to just see Uncle Solomon again. You know uh, because as as any person that comes his is the first face you always see at the National Theatre. Uh, so it was so good to see him again. And, and you know, I understand that we're in, in, in quite critical times as well, but, um, you know, let's, let's continue to ignite the National Theatre and, you know, continuously say, how is it that we can collaborate and continue to open up the, the, the doors of the National Theatre? So Des, any last words from you to the public? Uh, I need to just also emphasize again, if you're watching this live, if you can't support by purchasing a ticket, Shay, uh, as an actor or creative, go to the National Theatre's Facebook, the Instagram page. They've got amazing graphics now, quotes that can inspire. Please do share that because we need to continuously share. If you can't buy a ticket, it's really about the showing up and the support. But there's any last words from you. I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure to get an opportunity to speak about the theatre on your planet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so we're very grateful for that, for you helping in terms of just theatre, theatre can do, how people can contact us and collaborate with us. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I would also just like to encourage you to just take a look on those readers that I have just mentioned. Um, I also have a YouTube channel channel where you could go through. Uh, we have some lovely folklore stories and yeah. of course we had a webinar um, on indigenous languages and so forth that yeah. you could just, there's some works that you can listen to uh, really. So browse yeah. through our YouTube channel and see the workshops that we had on dance, supply, theatre and so forth. So yeah. have a look at that. Follow us on our social media page for any opportunities that may arise, you know, as a creative yeah. and also uh, for behind the scenes people. Yeah. A lot of the time people think like the creative is only limited to the actor or the director, but um, see uh, there's some opportunities as well for, for people behind. So please follow us on our social media pages in our theater of Namibia, Facebook, Twitter, as on Instagram. Yeah. And yeah, let's just continue having these conversations because, um, and let's continue supporting one another it is by actively doing what you can do that we are able to have this whole creative industry um maybe can take it serious mm. seriously again not i mean this is the wrong time to put the quotation mark on but anyway so that <laughs> we can help to have the creative industry be a force to be recognized to be mm. recognized for its contributions to the society because we saw how easily we could be cut off uh, like for instance when there is like things like the pandemic happened yeah one of the industries that we could be cut off the industry but if we can join force how important our contribution is to uh, this society yeah. that we can achieve so thank you for anybody this, that is supporting the arts. Uh, thank you for anyone that is supporting the NTN and just let's continue working together. Perfect. Des, thank you so much. I, I, I need to quickly just backtrack again. I had, I had a last year yes. when I just came back from Burkina Faso, I hosted an event and there was a beautiful uh, young lady with a clap and she came to me and she said, she was part of a workshop at the National Theatre because they, they focused on a, a project with children with special needs. And she came to me and she said, because of you, I want to be an actress. And I was so inspired because the National Theatre has allowed the platform for, for that. Because I remember there was a workshop last year that you also had for children with special needs. I think it was with the Deaf Institution. Uh, and that for me is um, mm -hmm. more of the projects that you know, I think the National Theatre needs to, you know, just tap themselves on the shoulder and say, guys, well done. We're, we're doing the work. And, and uh, you know, from, from my side, just continue doing the work that you're doing because it's inspiring. It's, it's motivating. It sets the premise for children to go and tell their parents, mom, this is 
my job. This is what I want to do as an eight to five. And in the next five to 10 years, you know, we've got uh, people that walk up and say, I want to be the PRO of the National Theatre. I want to be an artistic director. I want to be uh, the guy that's in charge of the light because ultimately the National Theatre has an entire production team that works on creating these productions and bringing the stage to life where everyone is a performer. Yes, I, I, I must say that as a team at the theatre and with the small team that we're about 18 people, yeah. um, I think it, 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 is, it is, it's amazing how we can collaborate with other, <laughs> with other people, do what we are doing, doing right now. And of course, also just to bring back on um, the, the project with the Namibia National Association of the Deaf. It was one of the most ex amazing experiences. Yeah. It really opened in knowing how actually uh, make provision for artists with disabilities. Mm. And I really was glad to be able to the NNAB as well as the Arts Council to be able to do that and we could do a play, we could do playing and we could also to do like a music performance and we could learn about this the disability the disability does not necessarily mean inability but mm. they are amazing artists they are amazing <laughs> creative yeah. and they just all write great people and one of the biggest lessons actually i've learned from there was i think at the first meeting that one of the one of the one of the representatives from the nna asking if if you were to be blind or disabled today, mm. or in a wheelchair, I mean, uh, as an example, would yeah. you be able to enter your house? Wow. And I was like, I would never be able to enter my house. So <laughs> that just means the society is not, is, is not, and these are just some that it, it opens your eyes how we take certain things for granted. And it was just amazing to learn that we need to be an inclusive society. We need yeah. to be a society that makes a, a that provides a platform for anyone, regardless of the uh, of their dis disability, yeah. whether they are disabled or not. We should be able to provide similar or this is the same opportunities to people with disabilities. So that was an amazing. So that was also a, a first for the, the theatre in many years, as was the first online theatre production, as was we have at storytelling, we have brought in DJ back to, mm. uh, to, to, uh, to the NTN. So there were a lot of first things and there were obviously a lot of eye-opening things to have to see how we can make the theatre an inclusive space mm. for everybody. Absolutely. Those, that's that's and therefore I applaud the National Theatre. There's we will not stop talking and we're also beyond time. Yes. But I just need to say thank you so much. I thank you so much to the National Theatre for agreeing on this and for just sharing light on the fact that we'll be soon, you know, we'll soon be seated in the National Theatre again and just applauding and crying and running around in the theatre. Um, I remember on, on Thursday, Roy and I made a joke and said uh, uh, remember when uh, uh, when we did District 6 and we stood in the spotlight? Or remember, you know, how we were constantly being told by directors, don't run when the lights are off. And we continuously ran, even yes. though when they... <laughs> but it was such we a... We good... miss you all. Yeah. And we are really looking forward to welcoming you all back. Yeah. But well done. Well done to the National Theatre of Namibia. Uh, under the leadership of Alma, you are doing exceptional work. Continue doing the, the work by, you know, creating an exclusive space. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we keep the conversation going on our pages alike. So thank you. No, really, really thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>